hello everyone. Today we are going to wander about and have a look at some of the top Harry Potter sites to visit in Edinburgh. I say some of the top Edinburgh sites because this is not an exhaustive list. There are lots of different places where you could go and see around Edinburgh about Harry Potter. Edinburgh's got a bit of a weird relationship with Harry Potter. None of the books are set here. None at all. However, J.K. Rowling lives in Edinburgh and she lived in Edinburgh for 99.9% .9 of the writing process, I think. She just started the first book when she lived here, when she moved here. I'm not ranking these sites either, I'm not going top 5 or 6 or whatever how many I do. I'm just saying these are places you want to come visit if you like Harry Potter. I'm just on the Royal Mile and behind me here, that's the City Chambers right here. Uh, just to give you a rough idea of where I am so that uh, you can sort of head to the right place. Okay, so I'm looking down the Royal Mile, up the Royal Mile towards the castle, St Giles Cathedral. Mary King's close and you just go straight in this first arch right here. Now this was in honour of lots of Scottish writers, athletes, anyone sort of famous really who either is Scottish or is kind of based here. J.K. Rowland's handprints in the ground. So, obviously, if you're a massive J.K. Rowling Harry Potter fan, you want to come here. You want to put your hands in her hat? One of the biggest sites that people say, now I haven't actually found anything in writing or anything like that, that this was actually a proper inspiration for Diagon Alley. But I just keep seeing it pop up on different websites, things that people assume it must have been. So I think I've got to count it, really. Victoria Street, just off the Grass Market. Grass Market's down there. Royal Miles and George IV Bridge is behind me. So it's really easy again. So if I walk down, you can see why everyone would think that it would inspire somewhere like Diagon Alley. It's got the cobbled streets. It's got the beautiful tall buildings. They're all different multicolored buildings. And there's a car, look, there's cars coming up where I can get run over and die. But yeah, this is apparently a big inspiration for Diagon Alley, which you can totally obviously see why. It does look like almost a real life version. And there's two things to point out on here. I'm gonna go number one with what could maybe, maybe confirm that it looks like it was a inspiration. The first thing that makes me go, all right, maybe this could be inspiration. I'm sure you're all Harry Potter fans if you're watching this. There may be, you know, a large, brightly orangey red coloured joke shop. I'm talking, of course, about the Weasley shop on Diagon Alley. And behind me, this has been here for as long as I can remember, like when I was a kid. Aha. Ah, ha, ha. Jokes and novelty shop with oversized, you know, nose and glasses. If that isn't, you know, on this windy little street, that is inspiration for what the Weasleys did, then it's a massive coincidence. Now, the other reason that this has now been claimed as the inspiration is Diagon Alley, more than more and more shops are claiming this Diagon Alley. I'm going to show you this first shop here. Now I've showed it on a different video when I did a tour of the grass market. I'll leave a link in the corner. But this shop here, and it's the same shop that's on Coburn Street, which I'll show you in a minute, which I think is also could be an inspiration. They obviously think the same. Harry Potter, world famous Harry Potter Museum shop. And it's got nothing but Harry Potter goods in there. Weasley Wizarding Wheezies. Prevalian Instant Darkness. Look at all this stuff. It's just Harry Potter inspired stuff everywhere. However, and this is fairly new. I didn't know this was here. It looks like it's just opened. Literally across the street. See? Across the street from it, I'm just going to turn around. There's this one here now. The Boy Wizard. Think that Edinburgh had claimed Harry Potter for its own. This is just going to cement it for you.
I don't think you can come to Edinburgh as a Harry Potter fan and not come to Victoria Street and see the similarities and kind of get ideas where J.K. Rowling was inspired. But Coburn Street down the road, I think, is also another spot to visit and I'll show you why. So as well as that, I'm going to include here on this sort of inspiration for Diagon Alley. This is Coburn Street. It's just off the Royal Mile as well, a little bit further down. And it is, again, it's a little windy street. It's a cobbled street. There's lots of little quirky shops on it. And I don't see how you can say that this street wasn't influential as well. It's exactly the same. Okay, so next up. I'm on George Fourth Bridge, just down from Victoria Street, um, almost in between Victoria Street and Crayfriars Kirkyard, which we'll come to in a minute. But there's definitely one shop, or one cafe, sorry, that has claimed the home of Harry Potter. The Elephant House Cafe. And you can see right in the front here, it's got Elephant House Cafe, birthplace of Harry Potter. The Elephant House Cafe is definitely one of the places where J.K. Rowling went to write the Harry Potter books. As far as I can figure from reading, watching documentaries and things, it was more the second and third book. But she was in there writing and she frequented a lot of cafes round about. Um, but there's one just down Chambers Street, which is kind of near there. Elephant Cafe is just behind me there. Chambers Street's right here. Right at the far end, there's somewhere else that I think is worth mentioning for this sort of where she wrote the early books. Up there. It's a place called Spoons now. Spoon, sorry. But it didn't used to be. It used to be called the Nicholson Cafe. But it's on Nicholson Street. And up there, J.K. Rowling definitely went in to write the first books. And she famously said that it was cheaper to buy a cup of tea in there than to heat her house. And the reason I know that is because of the, there's a documentary, I think, which is around about the third or fourth book. They did a documentary with her and she's one of them And she went in there and she sat in the corner booth. You can find the documentary, it's on YouTube. But also, you see by the Black Medicine coffee shop there, there's a plaque on the wall. And if there's a plaque on the wall, you know it's true. Yeah. Going back to a familiar place, we've been here before. Greyfriars Kirkyard. Greyfriars Kirkyard is obviously a massive influence. It's near both the cafes which J.K. Rowling was known to frequent and have a wander about. And if you actually explore, there's a lot of little names and things you want to see, obviously. It's Greyfriars Bobby again. If you haven't seen the Greyfriars Bobby story video, I'll leave a link in the corner. But if you actually explore this graveyard, there's a lot of names you might recognise. There's a Moody, there's a McGonagall, um, so don't be afraid to take a wander. But the graveyard itself, the look of it, the nature of it, and remember, J.K. Rowling had a lot to do with the look of the films. She had drawn a lot of sketches, she did um, imagined all these places in her head. Greyfriars Kirkyard is very much the inspiration for the graveyard at the end of number four, The Goblet of Fire, where Voldemort, he who must not be named, is brought back. Just take a look around and tell me you don't see the resemblance. There's one spot that I have to visit here. It has become synonymous. It is probably one of the, apart from Greyfriars Bobby, one of the most visited graves now here in Greyfriars Kirkyard. So to tell you how to get to it, you'll see this big sort of building in the middle of Greyfriars Kirkyard. Go straight to the back of it and directly behind it there's a little path to almost like a sub-graveyard at the side here. There we go, so you want to head this way through Flodden Wall and then you want to turn immediately to your right. Now, it's not a nice day here today, it never usually is, but I'm wearing wellies. And I'm wearing wellies for a particular reason. Now you can actually see keep out ground under repair, that's actually why I wore the welly, so I might not be able to get right up to it, which is kind of annoying, right at the bottom, right hand corner, as soon as you've came around that corner through the wall, you want to go right to the bottom right hand corner, there's a grave there you want to go visit, 
Look how popular this area is. They're trying to repair the ground because and they fixed it so you can't walk in it. I'm betting they're going to build things here. Right here. is the grave of Thomas Riddle. It has almost became a pilgrimage of Harry Potter fans to come here and visit that grave in this sort of graveyard. What can you say really to that? Also, you know, I'm standing in Princess Street Gardens right now, which used to be a lock, which I've mentioned before. And, you know, up there is Edinburgh Castle on a big rock face, extinct volcano. And at the very end of what used to be the Nor Loch, there's now a train station, Waverley train station, beside the loch that leads to the castle. Train station, old loch, castle on a rock. Train station, Old Loch, Castle on a Rock. Might be something, but it could be anything really. We've been to where it all started. We've been to some of the journey in the middle along the way. Where it all ended, the Balmoral Hotel. During my part of the Deathly Hallows, the last book in the series when J.K. Rowling was writing it, she realised she needed a bit of peace and quiet and just to be alone to finish it. So she booked herself into the Balmoral Hotel, somewhere up there, and wrote the very last words in Harry Potter. Famously, after she wrote it, after she finished that very last sentence, there was a bust, um, a statue bust. And she wrote on it that she'd finished, I can't remember exactly, I'll find a picture of it and I'll write, I'll, I'll put the picture up here. But she signed that bust, saying this is where I finished the Harry Potter series. Anyway guys, on that note, I think that brings us to the end of this Harry Potter sites in Edinburgh video. If you think of any that I've maybe not mentioned, I'd love you to mention it in the comments. Let me know if there's anywhere else I should visit. If you could subscribe, that'd be great. You'd be my bestest friend. Um, you really would. You'd be my bestest friend. Um, also, you know, like the video. That'd be great. But, until next time. Bye muggles, I mean, bye humans. <laughs>